This baby elephant lived for only a month. It died of dehydration after poachers killed its mother, keen to exploit one of Africa's most lucrative commodities, ivory. In the last year, the international price has jumped to more than a thousand US dollars a kilo, prompting an unprecedented wave of poaching across the continent. With a pair of tusks weighing up to 50 kilos, each elephant represents a fortune, a temptation for many too great to ignore. Less than a mile away, a giant bull elephant lies in a pool of maggots. He's just one of 37,000 African elephants slaughtered for their tusks each year. Two decades ago, trading ivory was banned worldwide. But last year, the law was relaxed, allowing government stockpiles to be sold off. Dr. Esmond Bradley Martin has been monitoring the illegal ivory trade for the past 30 years. There's probably more ivory going illegally to China than any other country in the world. I think there's a, a, a link between the number of Chinese that have come into Africa recently and uh, elephant ivory purchasing. For instance, um, I think it around 2000, 2001, there was something like 75,000 Chinese working in Africa. Now the figure is well over 500,000. And uh, we know the Chinese are being caught all over Africa. And in Kenya, they've been caught coming into the country with ivory from the Congo, from Cameroon. Those are the recent ones. The Chinese have been carving ivory for over 7,000 years. But until recently, um, only the wealthier people could buy it. But now the middle class has risen up in China and there's a much greater demand now. In what has been described by many as the new colonialism and in defiance of the global recession, China's annual trade with Africa has soared to more than $100 billion, a figure that is expected to grow by a further 80% next year. If you look at all the poaching incidents that's taking place in East Africa, it's where the Chinese are present. The northern part of Kenya, the Savo area, the Amboseli area. This is where the Chinese have been um, grading roads, uh, uh, constructing roads. The truth is 50% of ivory poaching in Kenya takes place within a 20 mile radius of Chinese road building projects. Yet the Kenyan Wildlife Service, a government body that aspires to be a world leader in wildlife protection, seems hesitant to point the finger at the Chinese, one of the country's primary international investors. Several Chinese nationals have been arrested with the ivory. And uh, at this moment, I don't want to categorically say that uh, they're involved. But uh, once we are through, once we crack the cartel, we'll now be able to tell you who actually is responsible for the buying of the ivory. KWS, in conjunction with the Tanzania Wildlife Authorities, to some extent, we are in control. But that's not the view held by many of the conservation groups that feel they have little choice but to protect what elephants they have and are now upgrading their own private patrols and preparing to respond in force. This is one of Kenya's most effective private anti-poaching units, a 70-strong, heavily armed team with a mandate of protecting 100,000 acres in Laikipia district of northern Kenya. They're on high alert after losing 52 elephants in the last two years and are responding to a tip-off that an elephant poacher is operating nearby. Everyone outside the conservancy has a weapon, everybody. And so they are now starting to bring their weapons inside the conservancy. It is very risky because these people will shoot. Uh, yeah, they will shoot without asking any questions. So we've had a plane shot at, two poachers were shot. So these people are armed, you know, and very well armed. G3s, AK-47s, because the price of ivory is 12,000 shillings a kg, and therefore everyone's going to chance their luck. East Africa is suffering from its worst drought in more than a decade, pushing as many as 23 million people to the brink of starvation. Crops have failed, tens of thousands of cattle and goats have died, and international appeals remain underfunded. This is just one of many child feeding stations scattered across the region, providing welcome yet temporary relief but for adults desperate to scratch a living, poaching is the most attractive option available. Nelson Mutunga was orphaned as a young boy and started poaching soon afterwards. Last month he was caught red-handed after killing an elephant and a rhino, but was offered a pardon in exchange for intelligence into the ivory smuggling underworld. 
and becoming a member of a private anti-poaching unit. He describes how he killed the elephants. I took a bow and arrow and dipped the head of the arrow in a very strong poison. I then shot at the elephant's rib cage, close to its lungs. It dies within a few minutes. He then sells the ivory to a local broker who passes it on to a Chinese trader in Mombasa. 134 Chinese nationals have been arrested in Africa trying to smuggle illegal ivory back home. And in the last decade, there have been 426 cases of ivory seized en route to China. This haul is the largest ever discovered on Kenyan soil, 703 kilos. It was found in a car driven by these two men and owned by an ex-Kenyan member of parliament. The parliamentary car pass is still intact on the windscreen. The ex-MP has denied it's his car, despite vehicle registration documents proving his ownership. The drivers were forced to pay a fine of 250 US dollars, which stands as a small deterrent. If poaching continues at current levels, experts predict the extinction of elephants across most of sub-Saharan Africa within the next 15 years. Without a concerted international effort to stem the resurgence of ivory poaching, images like this will soon become a thing of the past. <laughs>